They say there's only two certainties in life and that's death and taxes. Hey guys, welcome to today's video where I've done all the hard work when reviewing and trying out the vast array of crypto tax software out there so that you don't have to. Doing your crypto tax is essential, it's important. It can also be really tedious and complicated depending on the fact like if you have 10,000 transactions to go through like myself, it can be a really complicated process. So we want the crypto tax software to do all the hard work for us and save us a lot of time. So I've reviewed or I've structured this video from the good crypto tax software to the absolutely fantastic and more detailed crypto tax software. And I've listed the pros and cons for each one. And also I'm going to be going through the prices. So let's get into it. All right, so the first platform that I'm going to be reviewing is CryptoTrader.tax. Now, essentially, you make an account, you can make an account for free, and it's broken up into four main sections, and it's got a really simple UI, which I really like. So you have your imports, your other transactions, your review, and then obviously your reports. Now, you also have the option to invite your accountant to the crypto trader.tax platform so they can review all your transactions as well. So it's as simple as going add account and they have all the main exchanges here. Like they have Binance, they have Coinbase, they have CoinJar, they have CoinSpot, like, like the main ones are here. But the only issue that I have is when adding wallets because a lot of my transactions are done on Solana and I have a Solana wallet. I have multiple Solana wallets actually and I wanna upload them all here and you know process all the transactions. But the problem is, uh, I think if you want to upload like wallet transactions, you either have to uh, upload a file or add the transactions in individually, which is really hard if you have like, you know, hundreds of transactions. So I think the only way to kind of do the wallet and I could be mistaken is to go other account and then upload transaction data. So I'd have to download somehow download my uh, like phantom wallet or my soul flare wallet uh transaction data and get that into a CSV and then that would upload it to CryptoTrader.tax. So that is the probably the most annoying thing about CryptoTrader.tax is the lack of wallets or blockchains available uh, where I can, you know, upload the blockchain or the wallet or whatever into the transactions. I cannot stress how important it is for your crypto tax software to have the functionality to edit transactions and class transactions. A big part of doing your taxes is classing transactions, finding transactions that are missing. So with CryptoTrader.tax, when you go into the transactions area, you can filter uh, via asset, but you can't filter via exchange. So right now I have my BlockFi and my Binance connected to this, but there's no way I can just go through all my BlockFi without having to go through all of these transactions which is super annoying unless it's, I can't see it, which means like the UI is bad because I need to be able to really easily go through and, you know, check my transactions on a, a certain exchange uh, and find them, you know, really easily. If I want to like, you know, search for income transactions, I should be able to do that. But it's just, you know, the functionality is not there and that can be really frustrating. Okay, so let's talk pricing. So essentially you pay for the report. So you go view report and CryptoTrader.tax will open up an example report. So this won't be your actual report. So you can see here, it's got an example report. This is basically what you're paying for when you pay the $99.99 that it costs to purchase the report for that selected time frame. Now, the good thing is you can run this report as many times as you need for no additional charge. So if you wanna add more transactions in there, add another exchange, you can run the report again for that specific time frame. All right, so CryptoTrader.tax, let's go through the pros and cons. So firstly, four-step process, super easy to use, easy interface, easy to navigate, uh, and you can class all your transactions. So you can class it as income or staking reward or interest payments. That functionality is there. All right, so cons. Now, firstly, if you wanna upload a wallet or a blockchain into CryptoTrader.tax, you're gonna to have to go download the, those transactions somewhere else and then upload it. You can't just input an address and then have the platform like process all of those transactions for you, which is annoying. And I'll show you later on in this video how other platforms enable you to do that, which just makes this whole process a lot easier. I think when it comes to this stuff, we wanna be doing less work, not more work. 
Uh, also, they have a limited number of exchanges compared to like Coinly and Crypto Tax Calculator, which I'll show you later on in this video as well. Also, you can't filter the transactions. I can't filter transactions by exchanges, by categorization or class, which is really annoying if I want to find a specific transaction. Guys, let's get started with my review of Coinly. Now, if you've ever watched the Coin Bureau with Guy, one of my favorite crypto YouTubers, you would have seen him talk about Coinly and how great it is. And that's for good reason. Like Coinly has a lot of functionality. For example, they have a dashboard. Like once you import your wallet or your exchange, you can go to your dashboard and you get this kind of like overall bird's eye view of your portfolio. And you can, you know, change this according to a certain time frame. So this is this year. This is last year. I've only got, I think, my Solana and my Ethereum wallet connected. Um, but, you know, I can go the last 30 days. I can go the last six months and I can see this kind of like overall objective perspective of my portfolio through the dashboard. So I want to walk you through how to import a wallet. So say you want to import a MetaMask Ethereum wallet, you would click on your MetaMask and grab the wallet address and then import it into Coinly. And that will process all of the transactions that have ever been made from your MetaMask wallet through Coinly, making the whole process like super easy. All right, so although it's super easy to import a wallet or a blockchain into Coinly, they don't have all of the blockchains, like they don't have Terra Luna. If I search for Terra, it doesn't come up. They don't have Phantom, uh, it doesn't come up. So although they have a lot of variety of blockchains, wallets, exchanges, all that kind of stuff, there's a few missing, like even Avalanche. Do they have Avalanche? No, they don't have Avalanche. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so as I said previously, one of the most important aspects when it comes to picking a crypto trader platform is the ability to edit and go through transactions, filter transactions and label them. So Coinly has pretty good functionality when it comes to that because we can filter by wallet, I can filter by currency, I can filter by label, I can fil filter by warning, I can filter by date. So I love the ability to just find a specific transaction so I can edit it and make sure that it's labeled properly or that the funds are correct, all that kind of good stuff. So I just want to show you, for example, if I filter through Solana and then I want to find transactions that were a cost, I can do that. So all of the costs associated with my Solana wallet are right here and I can go through and I can make sure all of those are correct. So that functionality like makes my life a lot easier. So guys, there's one thing that I want you to be aware of, an issue that I've been having with Coinly and their Solana transactions. Uh, when I go to view the transaction hash, it doesn't open. It just takes me to this edit transaction. And when I copy and paste the transaction hash and head to something like Solana Beach or SoulScan, the transaction hash is incorrect. So I messaged Coinly about this and they said it was something to do with uh, the upper or lowercase letters in the transaction hashes. Uh, so they're, they're probably incorrect. Uh, I messaged them about this in November and they still obviously haven't fixed it. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up that that might be an issue. All right, guys, let's look at the pricing. Now, if you have under 10,000 transactions and don't need any of these reports, like a TurboTax report or a Schedule D, I don't even know what that report is. <laughs> don't know what that is. Um, but if you do need a custom file import or you do need a cost analysis, which probably will at some point, um, you might want to get the newbie or the hodler or the pro. Now, basically the main differences between all of this is the pro has email support and the newbie and the hodler don't. And then also the number of transactions that Coinly will process for you. So if you have, you know, under a thousand transactions, then the hodler is probably for you. If you're a pro, you can pick between the, the, the 3,000 transactions, which is $179, or the 10,000 transactions, which which is 279 So it's really up to what kind of trader or investor that you are. Uh, that's going to depict what you're going to need to pay with Coinly. Okay, pros and cons for Coinly. So pros, they have a great range of exchanges and wallets that are supported. Secondly, you can tag and filter transactions by income or interest or staking reward or whatever it might be. 
Uh, thirdly, they have a vast array of tax reports for countries all over the world. Cons, the transaction hashes don't work for Solana, which is what I showed you previously. And you can't import Avalanche, Terra Luna or Phantom wallets yet, like by, you know, copy and pasting your wallet address into Coinly. You're going to have to manually download a CSV file if you want to put those wallets in. And I say yet because I'm sure they're working on uh, supporting those wallets. Okay guys, so let's get started with this review for Crypto Tax Calculator. Now, I've really enjoyed using this platform. It has been a really smooth process. Like, it has been clean. This has been a clean experience. It's definitely one of my more favorite uh, platforms. So, coming to the import data area, I've imported my Solana wallet and my Avalanche wallet. Now, if I click on the wallet, I can see what's inside of the wallet, including coins that I've sent to staking pools or lending pools. So you can see I've sent Solana to a lending pool. I've sent USDC to a lending pool. I can see my NFTs, which is really awesome. I can see, um, again, my Aleph that I've sent to a lending pool. And I love that that's all accessible within this like one little area here. Um, and also with my Avalanche, I can see that I've got memo memories. So that means I'm staking time in Wonderland and that's available to see here. So a lot of transparency. If I come to my dashboard, the dashboard, as I said, so clean. I can see my top asset allocations. I can see winners versus losers, which is really cool. Um, and I can see all my holdings. So yeah, I, I really feel like other than probably missing like a pie chart that Coinly has, this has amazing functionality. So coming to the transaction section. So when you want to edit transactions, you can filter them by source. So I can filter them by my wallet. I can filter them by a currency. I can filter it by category date, or I have advanced settings where I can put a transaction ID or I can put a wallet address and find the specific wallet address that I'm searching for. So that's really awesome. Also, you'll see in the corner, there's a warning section. So this is where uh, I can go in and actually identify the transactions that need me to clarify what they are. So clarify them as, you know, a buy or interest or a staking pool or whatever it might be. Uh, so I can go resolve here. So for uncategorized transactions, it's going to show me all the transactions that I need to categorize. For example, this USDC payment I sent to my Binance account. I can go into it and I can go send, which is I still maintain ownership, but um, I'm sending it to another exchange. Um, again, this this payment here, this was me purchasing. Um, it was like a personal expense. So I can put personal use here. Uh, and then obviously this is an NFT and I put it to us. I sent it to a staking pool so I can put send right here. Um, and this is just like, you know, really easy to go through um, and classify and just fix those those transactions that need clarification with this feature in the corner. So I really, I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, it makes it, the whole process a lot easier. Okay, so pricing for crypto tax calculator, which is in AUD because I am an Australian. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. If you have under 100 transactions, it's about 50 bucks. If you have around 10,000 transactions, it's the best valued one that they say, $249 a year. Uh, now, to be honest, the jump from 10,000 transactions to 100,000 transactions is crazy. Like if you're like me and have 30,000 transactions, like, you know, you're gonna be paying around $400 to use this platform. So it is quite pricey compared to a lot of the other platforms that I've shown you today. So. Just keep that in mind that you probably are paying a little bit of a premium to use this software. Okay, so pros and cons for crypto tax calculator, starting with the pros. So firstly, vast range of supported exchanges and wallets. Secondly, you can tag your transactions as interest payment or income or reward or whatever. It has advanced filtering. Now, this is one of the special things about crypto tax calculator. Like if you need to track a wallet or if you need to find a transaction via a transaction ID, uh, you can do that through crypto tax calculator. And that is really great if you need to target those like certain transactions. Uh, the cons is, is that it's quite expensive, especially if you have over 10,000 transactions, uh, you can't tag 
uh, staking or lending pools yet, but I did email them and they told me that they're working on implementing uh, a tag for staking and lending pools. Uh, and lastly, you can't add Terra Luna wallets yet. You have to manually import that, but I'm sure they're working on that one. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you want me to go over a certain crypto tax software, let me know if there's more that I, do I need to make a second video of this? Let me know. <laughs> okay, I'll see you next time.